They're the dolphins. You on holiday? Yeah, holiday. Lovely place, isn't it? It's a lovely place. Yeah, Isn't it? So where are you from? Sorry? Melbourne. Melbourne, alright. Yeah. I couldn't resist coming along to dip me toes in. My, my swollen feet. My swollen, poor swollen feet. Don't know what that's about. Anyway, Christmas Day. Lovely, water's lovely. Bed in hospital. I better drop my phone. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful it is. Lovely. We got the bike up there. What a life. Dead for quids. Eden. Oh, that splashed right up my trouser leg. It's lovely. Wish you were all here. Anyway, I'm going to go home soon and uh, prepare the prepare dinner. Oh, that was cold. Prepare dinner and uh, have a beer. So, Garrett of 5000, signing off from Athens Beach. Good morning, folks. It's Boxing Day. It's 3 a.m. I've just got out of bed. I just woke up about 2 o'clock and um, I was feeling good. I was feeling a bit hungry. And I'm thinking, I can't remember eating because <clears throat> we prepared a <coughs> beautiful um, uh, cauliflower and broccoli cheese pie and veggies for, for um, Christmas dinner and bread and butter pudding Diane made so I helped to prepare it all so I just woke up at 2 o'clock and I'm thinking I'm hungry I can't remember eating can't remember eating so anyway so I woke Diane up I said did I eat? And she said, yes, you did, but you didn't have your bread and butter pudding. Because I just picked you up off the floor, you'd passed out, and you were lying on the floor with your face all purple. And I couldn't revive you for a while, she said. I couldn't move you. I was leaning against the wall, passed out, barely breathing. And my feet are all purple, swollen up. My face is all purple and I'm dribbling, apparently. So anyway, she's somehow got me up, put me into bed with a fan on. So I just, I just woke up just now and I, I said, you know, what happened? <coughs> so, so she explained that to me. So here I am, I'm feeling great, but I've just, uh, <laughs> I passed out. I don't remember anything about it. How freaky. So I'm still here. And everything's still great. In fact, it couldn't be better. It's very peaceful. It's warm. Very quiet. Boxing Day 2018. So... A near-death experience, another one. Imagine that. So I thought I'd tell you about it. So I'm up here now, just having a nice cup of tea. And uh, Mr. Sixpence is with me. <clears throat> so I thought I'd uh, talk about it. Because, you know, that could have been it. And I wouldn't have remembered anything about it. I wouldn't have known 
But the house is all clean and tidy. All my affairs are in order. Don't owe any money. The only thing I've got hanging on my head is uh, Casa. So I've got an imminent fine or whatever coming from Casa. That's the only thing I've got worrying me. I wish they'd just let me go. But they want their pound of flesh. It's, um, would you believe it? Anyway, I may speak later. I've just come down to the garage. Because it's wide open. Me and Mr. Sixpence. Puss. So down here, having a look at my my um, toys. My lovely Madass and my lovely Triumph. And behind that is the Perrin cycle, which took me so long to build. Do you know the story about that? You see that gearbox? I built that gearbox from scratch. So what it is, is a motorized push bike with um, a whippersnipper motor and gears that run through the bike. <coughs> cost a lot of money. It took a lot of time for a simple idea, which I thought of and sketched it down on a cigarette packet. And it took like five years and $20,000 to build it. But when it was done, it was exactly like the sketch. So if they'd have listened to me in the first place, it wouldn't have taken that much time. And there you go. And there's me. That's when I just arrived in Australia. That was after a near-death experience. I'd crashed a motorbike. I hit a car at 200 kilometers an hour. And that was um, two years later, after I'd recovered. So, here we are. Here we are in the shed. I've got my record player. That's an old projector TV which I, I got for the, that um, magnifying, what they call it, it's a, it's a Fresnel screen. So I wanted to make a solar heated water system. So someone gave me an old projector TV for the screen. But the, I like the table. I like the, um, the base of it, it's on really good caster, so I want to put a bit of glass on it and turn it into a little coffee table. That was the idea, <laughs> but it hasn't happened. Anyway, here we are downstairs. I've just come down to shut the garage door, put me toys to bed, and uh, relive my, my experience I just had. I'm just pausing for reflection. So apparently, as I just mentioned, I passed out, but now I'm feeling good freaky so anyway the triumph is for Nick the madass is for Matt all my tools are for Rory and all the rest of it's rubbish I have to go down the tip and the parent cycle that's twenty thousand dollars worth of bike but it's not legal to use petrol engine bikes anymore so I bought, I bought this, here we are, I bought this electric motor for it, that's a magnet, I bought this electric motor for it, so this is like a 6 kilowatt motor, believe it or not, so I got that for it, and this, which is a Leon controller, custom built 18 fat so it's ready to convert to electric but I haven't done it I probably won't do it so if I do cark it I want someone to keep that and look after it and that push bike over there is an old racing Peugeot bike that I bought in a garage sale for $20 and someone had paid $700 for it years ago it's a lovely little bike worth restoring so someone will want that. Matthew Shieldy made for me at school. See that hanging up? So. Anyway. 
That's my last will and testament. That's all I've got. I don't know where I'm going to leave my, my lovely daughter Charlotte. I'll find something for her. I'm sure she won't want the parent cycle. She can have my guitars. If she wants them. No one really wants them, they're probably rubbish anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'll just uh, close up here and I'll go upstairs and bash up a, bash up a couple of videos, I think. Because I still like doing that. <laughs>